All right, we're going to do a Q&A about the Morby method. Um, a lot of people call it the Morby method. Essentially, what it is, is you're using a lender and a private lender, and you're using seller finance. It is very similar to a hybrid with a few tweaks. So let's jump into it. And we got Barb here, who is a fellow sub two student and Barb, why don't you go ahead and tell people how to get in touch with you and kind of what you're doing in your business real quick before we jump into some Q&A. Absolutely. Uh, I'm relatively new to Sub2. I joined a little uh, late last year, uh, October timeframe, and I've really just kind of jumped in to see if I can get the best out of not just doing wholesaling, but applying creative finance to these deals because it was something I had come, come across when a foreclosure deal came, you know, by my desk and it was something that didn't work the traditional way. And then, you know, doing some searching around, you find pace and here comes sub two. And so obviously this is the best community out there. And, um, you know, I'm looking to, to continue to prosper in this area. And, and the Morby method has come across as something I should definitely become more educated about. So appreciate you taking the time to do that. And if you'd uh, like to get in touch with me, I'd love to connect with more of the sub two students out there. I'm located in Florida. Central Florida is my uh, target market. Um, and my number is 407-498-5652. You guys can call me anytime. Yeah, and what's your email address? Barb, B-A-R-B, at cashforkeyshome.com. Good. All right, and this will go out to more than just sub two students. So some people may reach out to you who are looking to do business in that Central Florida market. Uh, I do. I also do business in um, the Northern Florida area, and and I'm considering some other areas in Florida to do business. So maybe we can talk about that after. But let's talk about what's called the Morby method. And so let me put a little lay a little bit of groundwork. So eventually, essentially, Pace Morby developed this method because of, of a, a very common problem when you're trying to purchase a property on either seller finance or subject to. And the, the common problem is, is that someone needs a large down payment. So let's say we're going to buy a, a property and the seller is willing to seller finance it. And let's say it's a $250,000 property and the seller owns it outright. Right. And they say, look, I'll sell or finance it, but I need $80,000 down. Right. Well, that's a hell of a lot of money to put down whenever we are students of creative finance. And our goal is always to be in a deal with the least amount of money out of our pocket as possible. Very common. That's 10, 15, $20,000 to get into a, a single family home type of deal. So Pace kept running into this, other students kept running into this, and Pace came up with the Morby method. Mm -hmm. And so what the Morby method does is it brings in a lender, a mortgage company, a DSCR lender is what is typically used, which is a debt service coverage ratio type lender. That's what DSCR stands for. Mm -hmm. And they will bring to a purchase 70% of the purchase price or the appraisal value, whatever is lower, they will bring in 70%. Okay. And they will not typically allow a second position on the mortgage in the first transaction that we perform in what is a has evolved to become a, a, a method that takes two transactions to complete. So one thing is fine. You got a seller, they want to sell your house for $250,000. They're going to seller finance the large majority of it, but they want 80,000 down and you're a multimillionaire already and you need some depreciation and you got $80,000 and you throw it down and you pick up that new property, right? That's not hard. Right. What's hard is if you're a new person and you only got $500 in the bank exactly, and you have no idea or no way or no capacity to come up with $80,000. Sure. So this is how you do it. 
You get the lender to bring 70% and you find a private money lender. Now, if you're a sub two student, you have access to what is called gator lenders inside of the sub two community. But essentially what you're looking for is a private money lender who will do a really quick transaction. Mm -hmm. So it's in and out. Their money never leaves the title company. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that because their money is not very well protected while this transaction is taking place. Now, yesterday, we only had the private money lenders money. We never had their money, but it was only at the title company in the escrow account for three hours. Wow. And they made $5,000 in profit. That's awesome. So 70% comes from the lender. 30% comes from the private money lender. Now you have 100% of the money to close the first transaction. Now, let's talk about what the lender is going to require because I did not know this until I did a couple more remethod deals. Number one, the lender is going to require an appraisal on the property that they provide, but you pay for. This is the biggest one. The lender is going to require a percentage of liquidity. Okay. What that means is you have to have some money in the bank or an IRA or some kind of liquid money. Now on the deal that we just did, we, the purchase price was $216,000 and they required liquidity of $78,000. So you could do the math on that and figure out that percentage. But the thing is, is that what if you didn't have $78,000? How did you get that liquidity? Well, you're going to have to partner with somebody who has it. Mm -hmm. Or you can get a sponsor for the loan. So someone who has the liquidity don't necessarily have to be a partner, but they can sponsor the loan. And this is a way that a lot of people actually do business just by sponsoring these loans and just by being transactional lenders in these types of deals because they're making a significant chunk of money very, very quickly. So you could do you could do one every day. So if you had enough people doing them. So when you when you get set up with your lender, you're gonna have to have liquidity and you're gonna need a credit score of at least a 680. Now, they don't actually base the loan on your credit score. They're not really going to push that application through unless you got some decent credit. Does that make sense? Yes. It's not a requirement. And if you have already done a couple of deals and your credit drops, they probably will continue to do business with you if you've been a good customer. Uh, but especially in your first deal, they're going to be looking for a 680 or higher. Sure. Again, if you don't have that, you partner with someone who does, or you find a sponsor for your loan. Now, you're also going to bring that private money lender in, which could be a gator lender or a transactional lender. Once you become an established enough investor, you will be able to find these people and working through sub two and through the um, creative finance, let's call it colleagues <laughs> at yeah. large, yeah. Um, yeah. you will be able to find transactional lenders. Okay. If you spent three days looking for transactional lenders uh, and, uh, you know, you're going to find some transactional lenders because they know what this is. They know how to do it. So we got the 70% and we got the 30% from the um, private money lender. That is a hundred percent of the money. And the transaction number one is closed. Got it. All right, so everybody gets up from the closing table. You walk around, you go get a sip of water, you go to the bathroom. You come back to the closing table and the attorney opens a new file and he says, okay, we're going to refinance this property. All right, now the 70% that your lender sit in, sent in is going to go to your seller they're going to get that 70%. So if it was a $100,000 deal, they would get $70,000. Now, maybe that's what they require. Maybe they said, hey, I'll finance this deal for you. I'll finance 30,000 of this deal for you, but I need a, I need $70,000 down payment and I'll finance the other 30,000 30, for 
30 years, whatever. Right. So they're going to get their 30,000. There's 70,000. The other 30,000 that your private money lender sent to the deal, or if it was a $200,000 deal, it would have been $60,000. Right there, when the when the when the attorney opens that second file, and mm-hmm. he begins the refinance process, that money is going to be wired back to the private money lender mm-hmm. with a fee on top of it that you pay. Typically, it's a five thousand dollar fee. Now that thirty percent just went whoo! It just went away into the internet world. Okay, it's gone. Yeah. It's back. It's back. In the pro- so now you have a problem. You only have 70% of the money. Right. The rest of the money's gone. They sent it back. So the seller says, hey, that extra 30%, I'll finance that for you. Mm. I will give you a mortgage for that other 30%. So now you have your 70% loan at your lender and you have a loan with your seller. Got it. That transaction closes. And you have two notes or sometimes your seller loan could be silent. So let's say your property doesn't, isn't able to cash flow by paying two notes. You can ask your seller, Hey seller, why don't you let me cash flow on this property for two years before I start paying you? So you can, the seller can do a silent second and are the seller will receive a payment. Or the seller could do a silent loan to you for any period of time. So the seller could say, I'll give you that $30,000 for five years. You don't have to pay me until five years is up, but it's going to be a no payments for five years, a five-year balloon. So that gives you time to make the payments to your lender to, 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 for that property to cash flow, for you to start making money, and then you refinance it again later, a five-year mark, and you pay off everyone. And now you have a new loan, totally new loan. Everyone gets paid off, the original lender and the seller who gave you that mortgage. Nine times out of 10, though, they're going to want to get paid monthly. Yeah. And so... You have to have a deal. You have to have a purchase price that is low enough to be able to pay the lender and your seller a payment and still be able to cash flow. So on the example we did yesterday, our loan note is $1,500, including escrowed insurance and taxes. Okay, Mm $1,500. And our note to our seller right? They finance that seller, that 30% is $400 a month for 10 years. So we have to pay those bills, $1,900 a month, right? And now as investors, we typically always include in our calculations, vacancy, cost of vacancy, and capital expenditures for repairs. So we like to do it depends on how old the house is, how updated everything is. But typically, we like to do $300 on an average type of house, right? Yes. So we're, we're already paying $1,900. Add 300 to that, right? That's $2,200. Yep. Okay. But this property is going to be renting for $3,200. Love that. It's awesome. So we have a significant amount of positive cash flow. And that's how you do a Morby method. Now, I've explained it. Let's see if you have any questions. Honestly, I took some incredible notes here that I will for sure be looking back at, but you did an incredible job of explaining it. So honestly, I I, it really makes a whole lot of sense. And I've, like I said, I've, I've heard it explained before, but never like that. So as far as I'm concerned, that was a, that was awesome. I think that was great. Yeah. I I don't have any questions personally, if there were others listening, they might, but I'm guessing if you put this out there, you may have a few (laughs) that'll tap in and and put in a question or two for you, but I, I definitely get it. That, that was the best explanation I've heard thus far. So, and kudos to you for getting that. That was great. Thank you.